Gotta say, this forest looks incredible. Probably some of the best looking graphics I've seen. What was that? Well, it stopped making sound, so I'm sure I'm fine. What is that? Hello? I'm just gonna pick up the pace a little. I'm sure whatever that is, is just communicating friendly messages to me in its own native language. Oh crap, I think it's getting closer. Just be a good monster, okay? Let's just talk it out, okay? I'm so scared. Or at least I would be scared if I were playing a horror video game and a monster was chasing me through this forest. This incredible looking forest. But I'm not actually playing a video game right now. So what exactly is this then? Well, I'll show you as soon as we have a quick word from today's sponsor. Wouldn't it be great if our New Year's resolution to eat healthier food didn't require a lot of extra work and planning? Well, the good news is today's sponsor, Factor, delivers fresh, never frozen, healthy meals right to your door on a schedule of your choosing. They have a rotating weekly menu with over 27 meals and 33 add-on options like this yummy fruit smoothie. And Factor's meals aren't your typical frozen food aisle stuff. They're handcrafted, never frozen, frozen restaurant quality recipes designed to be flavorful, healthy, and appealing for all ages. And my kids love them as well. It's a nice way to end the workday with a Factor meal win for the whole family. All you have to do is pop Factor's meals into the microwave and they're ready to serve in minutes. Plus Factor will custom build your orders based on food preferences and meal history. So try Factor today by heading to factor75.com slash levelcap60 and use code LEVELCAP60 to get 60% off your first box. There's a link to all that in the video description. That's factor75.com slash LEVELCAP60 and use code LEVELCAP60 to get 60% off your first box. All right, so what are we actually looking at here? These are asset packs for the Unreal 5 engine. These demos here come from a company called Maui United GmbH. I'll leave a link to them in the description. And what they do is they go out into the environment, they use photogrammetry to basically 3D photograph things in the environment for incredibly high resolution models. And then they use the Unreal Engine 5 tech and its new Nanite tech, which allows you to import crazy high level of detail models. And then the engine intelligently uses some sort of level of detail scaling so that you can actually view it in real time with incredible accuracy and incredible realism. And these guys sell the assets on the Unreal Engine marketplace where you can buy an entire redwood forest biome for a little over 200 bucks or you can even get some of the cheaper ones like deserts and shrubs for like $65. This one here is a desert oasis. Basically, they're creating asset packs for building out entire video games. And of course, you don't have to use them for video games as the Unreal Engine is being used for a ton of different things now because it's so incredibly powerful. But this really just opens the doors to all kinds of indie developers and content creators and people who want to make worlds but don't have the budget to produce a triple A video game. It gives the ability for a small group of people to create incredible incredibly photorealistic, highly detailed environments. Before photogrammetry and this new nanite mesh tech was available, it would take entire environmental artist teams to put something together like this, and it would take them a long time and cost a lot of money. Now indie devs can potentially just go onto the Unreal Engine marketplace, buy the assets they want, and have a game world that could look on par with something being built by a AAA studio. And while photogrammetry has been used pretty effectively in video games for a while now, the ease of of converting photogrammetry into the Unreal Engine and the fact that its new Nanite tech specifically makes all these high poly assets run at decent frame rates and scales their level of detail in an efficient way so that you can get good frame rates now allows developers to use this tech without doing such high levels of optimization or sacrificing so many things. I mean, running through this massive redwood forest at 4K with incredible lighting enabled and everything like that. Granted, it's not a game running with AI and complex physics calculations in the background, so I'm sure something might need to be scaled back if you start adding on layers and layers of stuff for the CPU to do, 
But the fact that I'm getting such good frame rates, over 100 when I'm not like turning on experimental visual features, is really impressive and it means that this could be a starting point for many video games. I can already imagine tons of indie games out there that kind of have crummy or uninteresting graphics taking advantage of this, and even some games that I would say are beyond the indie state. Imagine Escape from Tarkov using photogrammetry tech in Unreal Engine 5. It would be pretty incredible. Now, of course, there are some limitations to this technology. First of all, it's based on real world locations. So if you're doing sci-fi, well, photogrammetry isn't exactly going to help you too much. If you need to create an alien world, you can't exactly go out there and photograph it and put it into the Unreal Engine. You're going to need to hire a bunch of environmental artists to create those assets by hand. Secondly, if you set the visual standard of your game to have this incredible level of photogrammetry detail, it's probably going to mean that you need to go out and kind of photograph most of the assets for your game. It's not to say that this would be more time consuming than creating them all by hand, but it might limit or control the way you produce a video game. Much in the same way that location availability and location scouting might limit where you can film a movie. If you want to create a nearly photorealistic photogrammetry video game based in Chernobyl, well, you might actually have to go to Chernobyl and start scanning assets. And I'll be honest, that does sound kind of cool, but it's also one of those things that might add on to the budget, timeline, production requirements for an indie development studio. But that doesn't mean that these asset packs are not extremely useful. I mean, remember the game The Forest? You might still be playing The Forest on Steam, kind of a a uh, woodland based survival game with like cannibal type guys in it. You could use this asset pack and like maybe one other to take that game to the next level visually. Imagine this game scanning underwater assets and then a game like Subnautica using those assets to create a photorealistic underwater environment. Games with kind of simple premises or not really needing to have lots of different levels and environments could massively benefit from this kind of tech. Games like DayZ or Rust could see massive visual improvements using these kinds of asset packs. And chances are, because this is how I would be doing things if I was running an indie dev studio, I'd be looking at these asset packs and thinking, well, what kind of cool game can we build around a photorealistic forest or a photorealistic desert or combine some of those environments together. It might even make sense to reach out and contract a company like Maui United to scan some of the environments that you wanted for your specific video game. And that's why these kind of tech demos and asset packs really excite me so much because I think we really are about to head into a new era of game development. These asset packs aren't necessarily brand new. This company has been making some of them for years, but Unreal Engine 5 is relatively new and it's opening up all kinds of new doors. And I think we might be heading into a new era where just a small studio of devs can make these photorealistic looking games, games that can compete on a AAA level visually, which is something that small studios haven't been able to do before. And I think the line between AAA studios and indie developers is going to get a little more blurred, at least from the visual standpoint in the coming years. And that's hugely exciting as a gamer because that just means better looking video games, but also it could potentially mean that less time and money is spent on developing environmental assets if so many of these ones are already available and the cost for them is relatively cheap. I mean, 250 bucks for a giant redwood forest asset pack is nothing. And the fact that the other environments are even cheaper, I mean, that's a no brainer for any studio. And then you can take that money that you would have spent building out custom environmental assets and put it into the other parts of the game, hopefully delivering more fleshed out, more imaginative, more expansive indie titles. Anyway, this is a little bit of an unusual video for me, but I just get excited about this kind of stuff and these big advancements in game technology and engine technology. What do you guys think could be built with these photogrammetry assets? I mean, there's probably some cool games being built right now using these assets. I'd be curious to hear your ideas of what could be done with this new photogrammetry and Nanite Unreal Engine 5 tech. Let me know in the comments. As always, guys, thanks for watching. And if you want to check out another interesting in-depth video, check out this one where I talk about whether or not 10,000 players could actually persist in Star Citizen's universe, which is what they're aiming to do.